everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here. I'm going to show you step by step today how to paint this pretty pink ornament. I'm using light ultramarine violet, a smooth foam ball. I'll be posting all the supplies in the description below. White glue or Mod Podge, a filbert brush, flat brush, mini fan brush, a liner. We're going to need a hanger or hook and some one inch organza ribbon. Now here are just a couple that I've done. I'll post the links to these videos for these ornaments below in the description for you. You're gonna need a pair of scissors to cut the ribbon to make your bow out of. First, we're gonna take the end of a paintbrush, poke it in, make a hole so we know where the hook will go and where the top of the ornament is so we paint our landscape straight up and down. Beginning with a flat brush and purple violet, we're going to take that color and go all the way around the ornament using the paintbrush and the hole as a handle so we don't get paint all over our fingers or wreck the image that we're painting. So you're going to paint most of the ball with this color and then you're going to pick up a little bit of white and start lightening it up on the top and the bottom going around and around and then we're going to create a little swirl here on the bottom and just finish painting the top of this one okay now with the flat brush we're going to take more of that violet Press, pull, and flick up for an instant forest. No water on your brush for this, and if you want to make it look like it's a reflection below in the water, you can just pull and flick in the opposite direction. Pull around for some shadows, and to create that shadow on that swirl, it goes around on the bottom. So I'm layering more of the violet where I want it to be really dark when it dries. I'm going to add some white for some mountains, just a little diagonal sweep with a brush and then dab a little bit of white for a sun or a moon and then add some snow and some highlights. So shadow on one side of these mountains and highlight and snow on the other. Now they just look like little pyramids almost, so just think about painting little triangles, keep it simple. Now I'm going to work on the bridge and I'm just doing two lines for an arch and then a little shadow on either side. I'm going to be painting a waterfall underneath that later on using a um, small filbert brush now. Tap in these trees. Now this video is sped up um, but my other two videos are a lot slower so if you want to watch those ones first and then come back to this one if not, uh, you can just follow along with this video. It's not too fast. It's not a time lapse by any means. But I have lots of videos on exactly how to paint trees, what brushes to use. I'll post links below this video in the description. I'm going to lay out the shape for the cabin. And then add a little highlight on the roof so I don't forget where it is. And I'll come back to that after as it dries a little bit. Now that my studio is really warm today, so this is drying quickly, making it easier and more efficient for me to um, add my snow and highlights. And it's okay if your paint is wet underneath and you pick up a little bit of that, you'll just get a nice mid-tone color, so it'll just be sort of like a pastel color. And then you'll just have to wait a little bit and add your final bright white snowy highlight after. So I need a shadow at the bottom there so I can apply that waterfall after and have the white really show up. To find the sore a little bit more on the bottom. And to the roof line. Let's add some windows to that a little bit later and a little chimney with some smoke. Some little little railing here to this bridge. So using the liner brush just make little lines straight up and down. And let's go ahead and paint a fence in here. Looks really nice leading up to this little cottage or cabin. 
longer lines for closer to us in the foreground and then they're gonna get smaller and shorter and closer together as they get further away closer to that house we'll go ahead and add a highlight of white on one side of the railing and those fence posts and then pull over for that other little railing okay let's add this nice bright snowy highlight on our roof So notice how I've got my pinky holding that ball in place, helping me steady my hand so I can have a bit more control. There's a little puff of smoke, so simple. Just using the tip of that lighter brush. Add some windows as well, little dots and dabs. Remember it's far away, we don't need to get carried away in detail here. Alright, so we're going to take a small filbert now, white paint on the tip, and start tapping lightly on top of these trees, leaving some shadow, that violet color underneath showing a bit. Look at that, this brush is like magic, it just does the work for you. You can find all these brushes at your local craft store. They're not really expensive brushes by any means. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get a decent brush. A little highlight there in between those trees or at the base of those trees where that moonlight or sunlight is hitting them. Now, I won't be personalizing this one today. Um, I did one, a purple one, uh, a few weeks back. If you want to see how I personalize and the lettering style I use, you can um, go watch that. I'll leave the link, like I said before, in the description below. Um, a few of these ornaments that I'm painting lately are um, orders from people for their loved ones or, f or friends. And so I don't want to give it away <laughs> with adding the names to them. Okay, so I think we've got all the snow on our trees. Now it's time for the waterfall, so I'm switching over to a mini fan brush. Pick up a little bit of that violet and the white. Come in for a mid-tone, very lightly pull to the center, and then curve and drop. So you don't need to push very hard for this. You don't want it to be a solid chunky line you want to be able to see that shadow underneath so you want to have all those little lines and spaces then we'll do another coat with straight white and we'll just dab some little lumps of snow here and there and highlights it just gives it a different sort of a texture makes it look like there's some little bushes under there maybe some frost or some snow covered little bushes or branches So I'll finish adding some detail to this and I'll let you guys just watch and listen to a bit of music then I'll come back and explain the glazing and glittering bows and hook process.
Okay guys, it's time for the gloss and the glitter. So I'm just using a satin finish Mod Podge. And if you just have white glue that as long as it dries clear, you can go ahead and use that. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm just taking a clean flat brush and I'm pulling it around. If you don't want glitter everywhere, then only add it sparingly on the places that you specifically want it to be sparkly on. Um, keep in mind, I've let this dry for a few minutes. You don't want to wreck all that beautiful painting underneath, so make sure that it dries before you apply this glaze. Okay, so while this is still wet, of course, we're going to take our fine diamond glitter, my favorite, and sprinkle it on. I like a lot of glitter. And as you can see, it looks just beautiful. Picks up all those different pastel tones. That's why I love this glitter so much. I'm going to turn it upside down, let that dry. While I'm letting that dry, I'm going to cut my organza ribbon and create a little bow. Now you can make a bow as big as you want. It's up to you. I like uh, just a decent size bow. Nothing too big that'll take away from the artwork of the ornament itself. Take a hook, push that through. I filled that hole with the glue. You can use a hot glue gun if you want, that works well. And then I'm just going to gently, carefully push that in. And voila! Let dry and it's ready to go. Like I said, you can personalize it if you want. Your loved ones and friends and family will appreciate this for years to come. <laughs> 